Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Like right before I hit the live button, I said to Ashley, oh my God, it's Friday, right? <laughs> because it's very easy to get caught up and overwhelmed in work and forget what days of the week it is. Um, but anyways, hi to everybody. It's been a minute since I've been here. Um, I see some people are starting to show up. Awesome. So we're using StreamYard today and we can't see your comments if you leave us comments if you haven't signed up through StreamYard. So if you leave a comment, make sure that you put your name in there if you're not signed up. Lynn, look at all of you guys are like signed up. Good morning, guys. Hey, everybody. Um, I hope you all are doing well. Today, I'm back with Ashley. Woo woo. Hey, girl. Um, always excited to have you here. Um, you bring so much value and solid information. And I just love chit-chatting with you, um, if I'm going to be selfish. <laughs> I just, it's always a joy. Oh, thank you. I feel the same way. Um, so we are here to talk to Ashley today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the stripped down course, um, but we're going to talk about some other stuff too that I think is really important for you guys. And I have a surprise um, I want to let you guys know that for one person who is on this call today and who stays with us through the end and is currently enrolled in Strip Down, I am going to be gifting you a seat in Ashley's coaching program, um, which is freaking amazing. And she is awesome. Um, I've personally been working with her. I'm going to continue to be working with her. Um because the more I show up for myself, the better I can show up for you guys. Same thing goes for all of you. The more you show up for yourselves, the better you're going to be able to show up in every other aspect of your life. And with that, we all know that I talk too damn much. And I'm going to let you take the floor, babe. I've got some questions for you. But I'm going to go ahead and let you lead today. You're okay. going to be like the leader in our little dance today. I'll follow. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Yes, it's so funny. I went live on Thursday and I said that it was Wednesday, but I can assure everybody that today is Friday. Um, and we're going to talk about setting ourselves up for success. And when we were talking about potential topics to um, bring to you guys, this one was really important, not only for stripped down students, but for any entrepreneur, right? And even for any human being, right? It's important that we feel like we're growing forward in life. I don't think that there's many people that truly enjoy staying stagnant, right? As humans, we evolve. And that's a really, really beautiful thing. But I also think that sometimes as we strive for success, we can hear outside people the world telling us what that should look like. And if it doesn't feel right to us, that can get really confusing, right? So today, this conversation, I want to encourage everyone to drop comments or questions in the chat box that you'd like Denise and I to chat about um, and provide any support for you guys with what you guys may be going through at the moment. Um, but inevitably, Life throws us curveballs. If you asked me what my life was going to look like, it would not look like this. <laughs> I did not think that my life would look like this. Um, definitely not on this timeline. Um, so that's a beautiful reminder that sometimes we have to put the work in and wait for the gift, but we do need to show up for ourselves first, so that we can show up for all of the other people that we love, as Denise started off saying. Like, we need to be able to nurture ourselves so that we can nurture those that really do count on us. But we have one life, and it's our life, so don't we want to live it to, like, the most abundant, most joyful way that we possibly can? I do. Every freaking day. <laughs> I do as well. Absolutely. And, and like you said, if you would have told me I was going to be here, like this is where I would be at this point in my life, I did not expect this either. I expected to be somewhere else, but showing up and being intentional about it, right? Like understanding, being aware of where you are 
and where you want to be and being intentional about it is so important. And yes, yeah, sometimes we do. Is it a wait or is it you put in the work and then it comes? It's like you you work on the stuff on the inside and then the external changes, right? Yeah, I think that's a really good point, like about perspective, right? To some people, it may feel like they're putting in the work and they're having to wait for the blessing or to other people, they say, I'm actually not really in control of the timeline. So I know what is for me is going to come to me, but I'm not really in control of saying at what time I'm actually ready for it. And I am a huge believer that we are not given things that we're not equipped to handle in a certain moment. Um, So though we may consciously think that we are ready for pregnancy, for instance. (laughs) I thought I was ready when I was 24 years old when I first started trying. Um, I did not think I'd have to wait until I was 36, 37. Um, So that was like a big gap, right? But honestly, when I can look back at it now, I can say, you know what? I wasn't with the right person and I actually wasn't ready. There was a lot of things that I personally needed to do and personally needed to grow and put in that work and be intentional and come to this place where, you know, my mind, my body, my soul is where it is now so that I can bring in this child into this world, right? I am obviously using my child as an example because that's a pretty big part of my life right now. Um, But think about it for your career. Think about it for a big move you might want to do, or, you know, you might want to move into a house or something like that, whatever, you know, you sunk your teeth into and really have wanted and didn't get it at the timeline you wanted, right? So I think it's all about perception. I think when we don't have the blessings or we don't have the goals achieved, we're thinking that it's being put off and it's, you know, waiting, right? We have these trials we need to go through. But when you're kind of on the other side, it's really easy to be like, I just wasn't ready for it. Right. I do think the universe wants all of us to be successful and have what we want. But I do think when it comes to like law of attraction, for example, we not may not be operating on the frequency of where that thing is. And we need to go through some challenges and some struggles so that we can raise how we're operating, how we're showing up so that we can really appreciate when we do get what we've wanted so much. Because what if you got it way back when? Would you fully be present in the moment of that gift? Or would you might have taken it for granted? I don't know. I have a, I have an interesting question that might be a little bit of a debatable topic here. <laughs> I love debatable topics. <laughs> okay. So if there was something that you wanted, but you were not getting it, Pregnancy aside, difficulties getting pregnant, but pregnancy aside, other things, and you were not achieving it, you're not getting it because you're not ready, but you're not ready because you're not, you're not viewing those struggles and those challenges as growth opportunities and growing from them and getting to the place where you need to get to actually create intentionally your reality. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I don't think that's debatable. Does anyone else? (laughs) I think I'm on board with that. Um, I mean, I think so in um, in law of attraction, we actually operate from our subconscious, not our conscious. Right. So we talk about that a lot. And I know that there's a lot in stripped down about that. So if you guys are hearing what Denise and I are saying and you're kind of like that, I don't understand that yet. Don't worry. It's not something that you've ever been taught in school unless you go to a humanistic um, psychology grad program like I did, right? So like you don't learn that in common core classes. (laughs) Um, You really have to be intentional to seek out that kind of information. Um, But you operate from your subconscious level, which is like the truth and the root. And so when we do need to have aspects of healing, we need to heal them on a subconscious level, not the conscious level, because our conscious minds can play tricks on us, but our subconscious knows, right? So you will get triggers and tests in life to see if you are going to make the choice that says, I've overcome that trauma or I've overcome that situation, Um, like in relationships. We'll use that, for example. Uh, If you're someone who 
is, you know, trying to find the love of their life, but you keep seeing that you're finding people who are not emotionally available. Okay. So really what we need to do is we need to make sure that emotionally we're healed from whatever has happened to us that had been the trigger to make us choose those type of people. And when we start moving and doing that work, you know, I'm a huge proponent of therapy. Um, absolutely huge fan. Um, so when you start healing those wounds, it may feel like life's getting harder for you. Has anyone ever felt that way? You're like, I'm doing so well, but why do I feel like I keep getting hit with these curveballs, right? I'm doing all the things. Well, that's the universe law of attraction saying, are you really ready for this next thing? Or are you going to backslide into what's comfortable, right? Because even if something is not safe, but it's, it's, um, common to you. It's historical for you. You have history there living in this traumatic space. That commonality with your history is more comfortable than the unknown. And our every human wants to be safe. So is it safe to know the devil that you know? Or is it safer to talk to the devil you don't know? Right? Well, there's a lot of healing that needs to be involved for us to have the self-trust, for us to say, you know what, this devil I do know, it ain't working for me. It is only caused me harm and pain and I'm stuck and I don't want that. So even though I don't know what's on the other side of this, I trust myself that I've done the work to be able to handle whatever this devil looks like. And it may not be a devil at all, my friends. It may be the angel who's been wanting to guide you this whole time. (laughs) Right? Guys, this is so incredibly relevant in our work as, as artists. Um, and also as entrepreneurs, um, I'm going to jump in with a perfect example, Ashley, um, where I failed miserably. And those of you who are in class are going to hear about this. Um, I decided to start a podcast and I did my very first one. And me and the entire team was like, this is going to be brilliant because this is what Denise is good at talking right? I can talk forever about topics. So podcasting is obviously going to be fantastic. Like we're going to knock it out of the park. Oh God. I I recorded my first podcast and it was such a disaster. It's not even funny. And I hit ended when I was done recording and I was like shook to my core. I'm like, that was horrible. I'm supposed to be good at that. Why was that horrible, right? And then instantly, all of the false narratives that are in my subconscious that tell me you're not good enough, you're not worthy, you can't, you're only good for this, you don't deserve it. And we all have these false narratives back in our subconscious. Everyone. Yep. And our subconscious wants to actually prove us correct. So, and it doesn't, it doesn't like, it doesn't understand emotion. It just, it, it, doesn't rationalize. It's just very logic, right? So it believes whatever has been put in there. So I immediately was like, holy shit, shut down. Like I just shut down, right? Then I had to record it again and it sucked again. And then I had to record it again and it sucked again. And then I had to record it again and it sucked again. And I finally like was at my deadline and I was like, okay, it's recorded. I can't, this is the best I can do with this right now. And instead of saying to myself, okay, this is something that you've never done before. This is a skill that you need to learn. You're not going to do it perfectly the first time. You're going to have to like, you know, do it over and over and over again. Find where your blind spots are, fix them, retool it, test, iterate, all of that kind of stuff. I was just like, I'm a horrible person. I can't do this. Every single time I had to record a podcast, that's what I did. I'm a horrible person. I can't do this. My subconscious was just like, you're not worthy. You can't do this. You are a failure. Not you're not, you're not, you're failing at doing this right now, but that's okay because you're going to be learning from it. It was just not, no longer a singular event. I personally was a goddamn failure and it was horrible. It was so uncomfortable. It was one of the yuckiest like professional experiences that I've ever had. And I dug my heels in hard. I was like, I'm not podcasting. 
Cause I don't want to feel this and I don't want to have to fight with my subconscious at the time. I wasn't paying attention to what my subconscious was doing. I was just like, Oh God, I'm a failure. Right. So I'm restarting my podcast and I'm not perfect at it yet, yet, but I'm getting good at it and I will continue to keep getting good at it and I will continue to keep going forward. And the way that I'm going to set myself up to succeed for that is by being aware of what's going on in my subconscious and being aware that my podcast doesn't define me. It's just something that I do. Yes. Uh, and our businesses don't define us or our learning growth experiences don't define us. Um, our bottom line doesn't define us, right? And we have every opportunity to grow with every setback, with every perceived failure. If we're aware, we set ourselves up for success and we get to move forward. Or we can do what I did and dig your heels in and be like, I suck, I'm a failure and get absolutely nowhere. So I have a question. So you had these thoughts, your subconscious had these thoughts. It turned into, I personally am bad at podcasting, which therefore means I'm a failure. Um, what, but you're restarting it. So what was the catalyst for you to make the decision to jump back in? Because it's something that I want to do and it's something that I want to be good at and I'm willing to give myself grace and grow through the process. I can tell you, I've listened to your podcast. It actually shows up on my Spotify every time I put it on my TV. There's your beautiful face. Um, and I know that so many of us are going to be excited when it does come back. This is also a really great reminder that we are our worst critics right? Like we can feel that like, and I will tell you guys, I think I've told you guys before, um, I'm very good at running and building businesses, but I actually don't think that my talent as a photographer is actually that great. I feel that there's so much more within me that needs to come out and it's just not out yet, <laughs> right? So when I posted my pre- stripped down images. I was scared out of my ever loving mind that everyone was going to judge the shit out of me. <laughs> They're like, oh, here's a guest expert and her work shit. You know, that's what goes through my mind. That's what went through my mind. Now y'all are so kind because y'all hype me up. So <laughs> I think it's wonderful to have a great support system when we're starting something that is new because we are not supposed to be good at things we've never done before. Yes, we can have natural talent, which is great, but hard work will surpass natural talent any day of the week. Oh my God. Amen, sister. Amen. I, I like I cannot agree with you on that anymore. It's not the it's not the talent that we should be praising. It's the effort that we should be praising. And we should never be striving for perfection because by our nature as humans, we will never be perfect. We should be striving for our own personal excellence. And when we shift to that, oh my God, the things that we can do and the places that we can go, right? Yes. So in those moments where you're having this narrative, like y'all, every single time I press an email blast, I like scream and I go, ah, every time when I posted and y'all know that I'm a student with you. Okay. I am in this thick of this program with you guys. I am right there. I've not done this before. Um, so you guys are seeing a real life journey with, you know, an educator slash student. And I am going to be posting my work. I'm going to be shooting and I'm going to be vulnerable right alongside with you guys. I'm sure you guys have more experience. I would assume that you guys would have more professional experience in boudoir because that's not necessarily my background, but we're in it together. And we are, we have incredible support systems, not only through the support group, but also with the accountability pods, with the Facebook group, with your private pod group. In Kajabi, you can actually comment on, I think you can, they may be turned off, but you can jump into your Facebook group and have the support. 
one thing I do like to do when that little monkey mind of mine says, girl, your work sucks. I mean, people pay for it. So it obviously doesn't suck that bad. You know, <laughs> like I'm making money, tens of thousands of dollars of this. Um, but I like to look at the facts too. I like to try and take the emotion and the feeling out of this meanness because we can be so mean to ourselves. I saw one comment that says, "Ugh, we're the worst to ourselves. And I'm like, we really are. And we really shouldn't be because the way we treat ourselves is a reflection on how we want others to treat us too. And it's a mirror, right? We talk about a mirror when we are guiding our clients. We've seen Denise talk about that. If you've done, you know, prep work, you've seen that educational piece. And we can have that too. When someone is self-deprecating, we may chime in and be self-deprecating too. We don't want to do that. So I support everyone in tacking, tackling, tapping, tapping, <laughs> tapping into y'all. I come up with the weirdest words now that I'm pregnant. Oh my gosh, sometimes I make zero sense. So my apologies. Um, I was trying to tell my fiance that I was thinking or I had a thought. And I said that I was thonking. <laughs> and he was like, you were what? And I was like, I am pregnant. That's what I am. So sometimes my apologies guys i'll fumble over my words which honestly could be something that would hold someone back from doing a live that would be something that would hold someone back from marketing their business um it's actually kind of become something that is um, a connection for me and my clients um and people who i coach because they don't feel like they have to be perfect because they know that i'm just going to post that shit anyways because it's me i'm pregnant i say thonking which what the fuck is that right no one knows um but in those moments where our subconscious is being unkind to us or we feel that those negative thoughts are coming in, I really like to look at what are the facts. So the example of mine is that my work is not to the caliber that it needs to be. Well, one, it's a beautiful thing. I'm on a growth journey. I'm going to be better, especially by tapping into this program. Um, but then it's like, okay, so I feel that my work's not good enough. Well, how long have I been in business? on and off for 10 years. That's a fact. If I really, really sucked, I probably would have shut down my doors. Have people compensated me for my work? Absolutely. Do people buy my top package? Absolutely. Do people rebook me? Absolutely. I have high ass retention. So when I look at the facts, I really need to give myself grace. So I always like to do a fact check with us. And if you're having a really hard time fact checking yourself, tap into the people who are your hype squad, tap into the people who do support you and do believe in you. They can fact check you for you. That's just a little uh, self audit I like to do to bring my awareness to the actual situation and not a fabricated situation that I made up in my mind that is going to allow me to spiral to the depths of depression, which we don't need. <laughs> And we don't do that in Strip Down. And you have an incredible community when you are in Strip Down, like an incredible community. I have done, at this point, everything I literally could think of to make sure that every single student not just finishes the course, but like thrives and blossoms and blooms both professionally and personally, because quite frankly, it's going to be kind of hard to thrive professionally unless we're doing it personally. And that's one of the reasons that Ashley is with us on this journey. Um, one, Ashley wanted to take the course, which is awesome. Um, and two, she's so amazing um, with her her background um, in psychology. Um, and she's so good at helping photographers get out of their ways and move forward and be successful that she's part of it as well. So in case you don't know, I just want to let you know this, that if you are a stripped down student currently, you can sign up with Ashley for her mentoring group. She's taking on, I think we have what, like 16, 15 or 16 spots left right now, something like that. Yeah. Um, at five ninety nine, dollars And it is in, it's in its additional to strip down. So you get the support and strip down, 
But if you get into strip down and you get overwhelmed, which guys, it happens. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to scare anybody, but if for real, it happens because in order for me to help you guys grow, they have to ask you to step outside of your comfort zone. And just like my whole ordeal with podcasting, um, I'm going to put you, you are going to be in situations that you need to let go of false narratives. You need to ascertain where your blocks are. You need to figure out why the fuck you're getting in your way and how the fuck you get the fuck out of your way. Can I say fuck any more than that? Um, <laughs> and when you're all on your own and you got a lot of false narratives in there, it can be a difficult thing to do. So I've done everything within my power to make this iteration of Strip Down the one that everybody gets over the finish line and thrives. And I am aiming for a hundred percent success rate. That is my goal. Will we get there? We'll see. We're going to do our very best to do that. And Ashley is very much part of that journey. And if you are someone who is, if you can foresee yourself getting overwhelmed in course, um, if you can foresee yourself making excuses not to go to course because it starts getting uncomfortable. If look, if you've bought a whole bunch of courses and not taken them, please sign up for Ashley's group. Just please. I'm begging you. I'm going to do all that I can on my end, but massive, massive handholding and a lot of loving, caring support will get you through this. And you paid for this class for a reason. You paid for this class because you want to elevate yourself as an artist. You want to stand out in an industry that is saturated. You want to feel like a true artist. You want to feel accomplished. You have the heart to serve other people. And you know that you want to take your work to that place where they're going to experience things that they've never experienced before. So if you've paid for those other classes and you didn't show up, I'm telling you, you need to work with Ashley. Um, if you're a person who has trouble like stretching or you have a lot of false narratives back there in your subconscious. And when I say false narratives, just to explain that, and Ashley, you can expand on it if you want. Um, false narratives are the things that we learn as young children um, when our subconscious has no frame of reference for anything else. And it just kind of like takes in everything that comes at us. So if we're bullied as we're little, our subconscious starts accepting those things as truths. If we're told our only value is our physical appearance, then we start accepting those things as truth. If we are told either through words or actions that we're not lovable, then those things become truths. They're not like, oh, maybe. They are yeah. actual truths in your- We're a sponge yes. and we yeah. don't have a filter as children. <laughs> And then as we get older, life still keeps coming and they keep building and building. And then what happens is we do everything we can to reinforce those truths. So if you're ready to break those false narratives and actually be the person that you were supposed to be and live the life that you were supposed to live, you're absolutely in the right place. And I know y'all are like, wait a minute, this is a photography group. Yes, it is. And it is for photographers who want to be fucking brilliant. And the way that you become fucking brilliant is by getting out of your goddamn way and learning and stretching and growing. So if you've struggled with those things, I highly suggest that you consider working with Ashley. So Ashley, I want to ask you a couple of questions. So we've got a lot of people in here who are ready like to start strip down, by the way. <laughs> For those of you who are signed up, it's going to be dropping tonight, so you get a head start on it. Shh, don't tell everybody else. <laughs> Cart closes on Monday, so if you haven't signed up yet, you, get in now. Y'all better hurry up. Um, so you guys are going to get class today, and if you haven't done prep week, there's work there. And now I've just laid a pretty fat course on you guys right now. Um, so if you think you're going to need support, additional support. You need to get with her. But we want to set everybody up for success. And not just our students, even the photographers who are here who are joining us that are like, 
mm, I'm not doing strip down this time, but I see value in this group and I want to be part of this community. How can we help them set themselves up for success? Ashley, what would you recommend? What are some steps that they can take? Yes. One is to define what that is. You need to actually get clear on what success looks like for you and feel confident that it's your idea of success, not someone's idea of success for you. Okay. So that's kind of the first step. Um, It's kind of like you know, hopping in your car and not having a destination and just like having faith that you'll get there. (laughs) Like, well, where is there? (laughs) What's my journey like? I don't know. You need to be able to identify what does success look like to you and go seven layers of why deep. So also connecting to the why, right? So let's say, for instance, someone who is not a stripped down student is here because they do find value in this group because it is a fire freaking group, Denise. Bravo to you. There is a ton of value every time you show up um, and a ton of support. So for those who are not ready to take the leap into the deeper education, we still see you. We know that you'll be here at some point. I'm manifesting that for the group. (laughs) Um, But so you are a photographer and let's say that you just kind of got started through, you know, you're taking a couple shoots here and there, but you don't really have like a strategy or just kind of piecemealing your business together when an acquaintance, you know, says like, oh, hey, I want a photo shoot, right? So maybe your idea of success is by the end of the year, you have your pricing structure laid out. You have content and a portfolio for the niche that you want to go into. Okay, so why does that matter to you? Well, because when someone comes to me, I'm so overwhelmed and I feel like I'm just piecemealing everything together and I feel like I'm already behind before I get started. Has anyone ever felt that way? I'm a, I am thinking, and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking that some of our stripped down students may feel that way. They know the lesson one's going to be dropping tonight because we're on here and we got that news early, um, but they haven't finished prep week. So I'm behind before I even got started, right? We don't want that. So we are figuring out what is our plan? What is the idea of success? And I'm going to go ahead and make a plan. And if y'all know Dale Carnegie, he is one of my OG mentors. Um, he is brilliant. He says that one hour of planning saves 10 hours of doing. Okay, so I know that sitting down and finding focused time to really plan out what your idea of success is, connect to your why, and then go deeper and deeper and deeper to get to the like emotional and core reason why six figures is important to you, right? We just use that one because that's so common in the entrepreneurial world. But like, why does that matter? Keep going deeper, keep going deeper. If you can do that, you will have a roadmap that allows you to stay on the highway, right? Instead of taking all these back roads and trying to figure out how to get there, you have the GPS. It is saying, I-5 North, go, (laughs) right? And get connected to the Y again. I don't think we can really harp on that enough because it's something that either lives inside you like Denise, and that's exactly why she shows up. You can, anyone can ask her at any moment and she can get emotional about it. Same thing for me. It doesn't matter what program it is, whether it's, you know, my photography brand, boudoir or life coaching. My core root of why I do anything is because I want to show every single person, especially women, that everything they need to be the wild success that they dream of is already within them. And they can uncover their voice and use it so that they can lead and create the life that they want. And to me, financial independence is important because in my previous life, I didn't have that. And I had to go through a lot to be able to get that. And I never want to give that away ever again. So to me, that's my why, why I do everything I do. So when I get overwhelmed, I can reconnect to that and take a deep breath and feel like I have the strength to get back on the horse, to start that momentum again, to take that action. So 
time, what skills do you need to get to that level of success that you don't currently have? Okay, so is there any knowledge you need? Like for me, it's stripped down. <laughs> if I want to be able to create art through body language and emotion and beautiful, you know, technically sound images, but that allows people to feel something when they look at my work, I need to educate myself. So I found a resource that can give me that piece of knowledge that I am missing so that I can get to where I'm headed. So that's where Strip Down comes in, right? List it out. Find mentors. If you can't invest in mentors, University of YouTube is incredible. Teach yourself. Be a lifelong learner on the journey. Because even when you make your plan, you connect to your why, you have your time blocking, you've prioritized. Hell, you might even be at the place where you can delegate some stuff, which is like big time. I love delegation. <laughs> right? The do not disturb feature on my phone is my best friend. Um, but I know that not, you know, not all people can actually do that. Um, but figure out what you can do and set the time to do it because there is a, um, a theory called the Parkinson's theory. And what that means is however much time you're going to give something to take, it will take that much time. Okay. So we have had prep week zero for, let's just say two weeks. I don't know. We're just going to say that. Well, we had two weeks to do it. So if you're a procrastinator, or you say, oh, I have two weeks to do this. You're going to be finishing it tonight because you've given yourself that much time. So this is where time blocking comes into play really well because you're going to say, I have one hour to execute, you know, whatever task you need. I have one hour to get through writing my letter to myself, my future self, um, or I have 30 minutes to do that. You're going to feel like you have a fire lit under your butt <laughs> when you start condensing the time frames that we have. Um, so those are things that work for people who are not in strip down, but I do want to uh, talk to strip down students real quick. Uh, if you haven't gone through the prep week zero time management 101, do yourself a favor and read through that and get your calendar linked as Denise and Colleen and everyone on her team has created that calendar that we can go ahead and download because it'll give you reminders of when you need to get your shit done. And that's without even talking about the accountability pod. <laughs> that's just yeah. if you're being a lone ranger doing it yourself, you're still have, not left alone. Yeah, I have been watching these comments and it's breaking my heart. And I want to talk to everybody out there right now. Um, first and foremost, all you stripped down students and everybody who's not a stripped down student and who is like feeling like they're struggling with like being overwhelmed. I need you all to just take a big deep breath. Ashley, want to do it with me? Just a yes. We'll do a four by four. That was one of be well, that was one of my things when you get overwhelmed. Our four by four. We've done it here live before. It's a box breath. So we're gonna breathe in for four counts. We're gonna hold at the top for four. We're gonna exhale for four, and then we're gonna hold at the bottom for four. Okay, we'll do that two times. Is that okay, Denise? Yeah, yeah let's go. All right. Oh, yes. Less, okay. less than a minute, guys. Yeah. Guys, you're okay. So much fear and anxiety coming up in these comments. And I understand that's part of growth and that's part of like feeling overwhelmed. But I need you guys to give yourself a whole lot of grace right now. It doesn't have to be this way. You are the intentional creator of your reality. You get to choose. If you are behind, it is okay. We're all going to get there. Um, this course should never be used as something to beat yourself up with. 
Mm -hmm. ever. This course is the sunshine. This course is a place of flourishing and growing and non-judgment and self-acceptance and self-awareness. And then learning all the skills that we want to learn to move forward and be the best that we can be for our clients, for ourselves, in our art, in our businesses, in all of it. All of the negative stuff that I'm seeing, gotta let go. We have to let it go if we want to move forward and thrive. If you're behind, it's okay. Take the steps and actions that you need to do to get to where you want to be. This path is not the same for everyone. Nor is it a beautiful thing. Yeah. And nor is it necessarily linear. Um, It can weave and that's okay. We accept you all for where you are and what you're doing. It's okay. So another question I want to ask you is when you do feel overwhelmed and have no time to do what you want to do, what do you do? Well, I do a four by four breath work to start. Yeah, I I calm the fuck down as best I possibly can. Yes, please. So I love that we did that together. Um, So taking, I like to do a breath exercise, which the easiest one is a four by four, you know, the breathe in for four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold at the bottom for four. That's something that I think is pretty easy for us to remember. So I like to do that for a few cycles. And if I do have time, I do it for two minutes, a whole whopping two minutes right? Because I want to allow my body to calm down physically because a lot of times I don't know if I'm the only one, but when my mind starts racing, my body feels like it's like my, the organisms in my body are like going like that, the atoms, right? So I want to slow all of that down. And when I can slow that down, a lot of times my brain will slow down too which is very, very helpful to get into a place where I can be more clear with my thoughts, okay? And then I like to do a quick win for myself, right? We have all the list of the to-dos that we need to do. And sometimes there are items that are like more chunky, like for instance, in prep work one, I, I really needed to be intentional of how I could get that down because um, get that done because I got a lot of stuff going on, right? As we all do. So when I was driving to the gym, I put Denise on, I put the video on, right? So I could hear her audio. And then when I'm at my lights, I look, right? And I'm like, okay. And then I can go back and I can scroll through the actual slides when I'm at home. Um, and then I looked when I had a couple minutes, I looked at the PDF read throughs, right? Because they were a little bit shorter, I could read them quicker than watching like the art of emotion video, which is a beefy video. So I really tried to look at, okay, what is my to do list here? What are the things that I need to get done? I don't have a lot of time right now. So what's a quick win that I could do that I could mark as complete and see that bubble filled in, right? There's something very satisfying about checking an item off your to do list. When you look at the course, there's little check marks of things that you have completed and things that you still need to get done. And I love seeing all those little blue dots, right? So I could say, you know what? I could read the time management 101 right now. I have the time to do that. So I'm just chipping away and I'm not fully looking at the whole list, right? Because what that does is immediately for me (laughs) sets an overwhelm because I'm like, how am I going to have enough time to do like 20 things, right? Well, if I could say, What I've started doing since prep week zero dropped is before I make dinner, I have a little bit of time after my workday ends and before my fiance gets home and I make dinner. That's stripped down time. It's the same time every single day um, so that I know I have like one hour a day to dedicate to this. I can find that. Or I'll put them on when I'm in the shower, right? Yes, I would encourage you if you could sit and you could look at the screen, but I want to, I, I like to hear audio auditorially and some, you know, like my, my work, my, my class, 
yeah, there are visuals to it, but I'm going to tell you everything that's on those visuals. It's just another way to reinforce however you learn. So if you are an auditory learner, you could put my masterclass on and take a shower if you need to. <laughs> You'll get all the information. Absolutely. You're not going to miss anything. I can only say that for mine. I don't know everyone else's. So setting those quick wins will really create this momentum for yourself. And I love how Denise talked about giving yourself grace. And I want to encourage you to get back on the horse because when we are in action, I N space, not in action, but in action, the act of act moving, it's easier to keep going. Let's think about working out. That's physics right there. <laughs> when you start working out, it is easier to continue working out. When you stop working out, one day can turn into three to five to weeks to months to years. And it is so much harder to get started again. I encourage you that if you're like, I haven't done this. And here's the deal, y'all. There are emails that are going out. They're checking on you. They're going to remind you you haven't logged in. Right? Take that as a sign from the universe that you are exactly where you're supposed to be and it is okay to pick up where you left off. Yep. And every single, for those of you who are like, oh my God, I didn't get it all done. I'm so behind. Like, I feel you because I'm not that kind of person as well. And that sometimes in the past has stopped me from taking action. And then I just feel horrible about the whole thing. I would encourage every single one of you, like Ashley said, one little piece at a time and celebrate that win. Do not celebrate like perfection and or talent. I want you to celebrate action and I want you to take as many small actions as you can. You're here today listening to this. This is action. Huge. I'm so proud of every single one of you. You're, you're doing something. You're making the time for this. So every single small action that you take, I don't care how small it is, that is a step towards your growth journey. That is your growth journey. And celebrate that. Celebrate yourself for doing that. Do not put this big looming of everything I have to do to be perfect because you're never going to be perfect and everyone's going to experience it differently and we're all going to work through it differently. But every action we take is a celebration of our showing up for ourselves, us loving ourselves, us caring about ourselves and those around us that we want to do better for. So I'm super proud of all of you. If the only fucking action you've taken is to sign up for the course. And for those of you who couldn't sign up for the course, but you follow along with the with the value content that I'm bringing, that is action. You desire to grow. And every time you show up, you are in fact growing. Celebrate yourself. You guys are amazing. You have to keep telling yourself this. It, and it's not a, I'm going to be okay when I get this done. I'll do great when I get this done. It is, I am doing great now. You have to start telling your subconscious now, not then, not over there, not when, now, in the present, now, the action I am taking. This helps stop with overwhelm also. Yes. So I would highly encourage that you guys do that as well. Um, I think that's huge before we move on living in the now because life is not in the future and it should this sure as hell shouldn't be in the past, right? Yeah. So worry comes when we're thinking about a life that has yet to happen. Yeah. Let's stop worrying about things that have yet to happen and start appreciating the things that are happening right now. Yep. Again, if it's that quick win, to some, it may feel that it is small and it is not that big of a deal, but perception, right? So check yourself on your perception. <laughs> could you use a little perception shift? Oh. Because if you could, 
Denise or Colleen just dropped the link to strip down and to the support group. And if you are feeling that you need a change in perception, I highly support you in joining us um, because that will not only change the way you work through this course, but that will change the rest of your life. Can I have another full Denise transparency moment? We love those. Okay. So I shared with you guys the podcasting fiasco. Um, there have been a lot more fiascos than that during my life. Um, but more specifically, we're going to talk about during this launch. Okay. There have been a lot. And unfortunately, because of my upbringing, and I know I talk about how wonderful my mom was when I was a little girl and how amazing she was. And she was, but there was also an incredible amount of um, adversity and difficulty and abuse, not necessarily from my mom, sometimes from my mom, some of the stuff she told me maybe wasn't on point. Um, but having, you know, a father that wasn't there and the messages that I got from around me, my subconscious, I have been at war with myself my entire life. And so if any of you are feeling like that, I want you guys to know that you are not alone. I have literally been, it's, I often say, Ashley, it's amazing that I'm a full functioning adult based on where I came from mm -hmm. and the life that I've experienced, but I, but I am. And, and the more grace I give myself, the more aware I become, the more accepting I am of who I am and how amazing I am in this part of my journey and be grateful that I get to continue moving forward with that journey and be proud of myself for doing that. Um, the peace that I have had. And do I have everything all together? Oh, no, 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 no. But am I moving in that direction? I am. And one of the biggest things for me has been being aware and paying attention to my mindset and shifting the false narratives and celebrating my wins and saying things to myself like I'm proud of myself. That's a weird thing for Denise to say to herself because I'm always like more, better, more, better, more, better, more, better, more, better. And within the last six to eight months, it's like, no, I'm actually proud of myself. And at first it was a really hard thing for me to say because everything in my subconscious, all of my programming was telling me, you have nothing to fucking be proud enough of. You're not good enough. Mm, you have to work heart. harder. You have to work harder. You have to do more. You have to be better. You're not good enough. You have to prove your worth. Not to the world, but to, to myself. And I, and I couldn't, I couldn't prove my worth because my subconscious fully believed that I was unworthy. And so having to come to terms with that and be aware of it and then start working towards it with the small wins and giving myself grace and the, I'm proud of myself and, and I'm not there yet, but I'm getting there. And all of these different little, little tiny things that seem so little have made such a dramatic impact. And part of that is it in working with Ashley, we've had several conversations about this and what I need to do. And this is why I'm such a huge proponent for any of you that are struggling with this to actually join that group coaching with her because I'm giving you, I can't go into, if I gave you a full class on the subconscious, <laughs> your mindset, failure tolerance and all of that kind of stuff, y'all would just dip because you're like, it's a photography class. What are you doing? I promise you it's relevant, but we kind of came from it a, from a higher perspective. But once you start seeing and learning these things, having someone to work with you and in a smaller group setting to get through them is brilliant. Like I am so blessed and so lucky that I get to work with Ashley and that I've personally had these insights and this is the journey that I'm going on. And I so desperately want it for every single one of you. So again, if you're struggling with that, I cannot, I cannot recommend enough that you truly consider working in that support group with Ashley. Um, she does have her background in psychology and she is going to be able to help you get rid of the blocks because the only thing that is stopping you today 
there is only one thing that is stopping you today. One thing only. It's only one thing. And it's yourself. That is the only thing that is stopping you from being the intentional creator of your reality and living the life that you want to live. And you might say, oh, well, I'm in a bad marriage and my husband's not supportive of this. Um, as soon as you start looking at the who is causing your problem, you need to remember you're the one who made those choices. And how do we kindly and lovingly help to start removing those blocks or making you aware of those blocks? Or it might be that, you know, I don't have the money for this because I spent the money over here. Well, why'd you spend the money over there when you maybe should be spending it over here? Were you trying to fill a hole over here? I'm guilty of this. And so being aware of that kind of stuff is so incredibly important. And it is a pretty deep journey. And it's not 100% part of the stripped down curriculum. We have a high level overview of it. But we dive deeper into that with Ashley. And again, from my experience working with her, um, I am very happy to say that I am a different woman than I was a year ago. And it's in part due to some of the work that I've done with Ashley, but I'm also going to take my responsibility for it. And it's that the work the that I've done. That is the most important thing. Like even when my clients tell me like, oh my gosh, you know, fill in the blank of whatever success. I'm like, I can lead you to water, but you have to drink. So no matter what support system you have, all triumphs, are ours, our own, right? All successes we have, we did. We can have support systems, but they don't move our feet for us. They don't make choices for us. So at any moment, we all have a choice. And I know it can what it can feel like to feel like your back's against the wall. I'm a survivor of domestic violence, rape, and divorced from an alcoholic husband. I know what it feels like to feel like you have your back against the wall. But even in all of those moments, I had a choice to fight or not. I had a choice to make a plan and get out or stay stuck. At any moment, at any turn, even when it feels like your back is against the wall, there is an option. There is always a path to a different life. And it doesn't matter what life coach, what therapist or anyone you have saying like, here's the light. You have to say, I want to walk towards it. And I'm going to do the hard thing to walk towards it. So Denise, you wanted to change your life. So you did. And you should be very proud. Ah, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like just like the start. Like you get a whole new lease on life when you can say, I fucking love myself. Like I didn't love myself. There were reasons why I didn't feel like I lo should love myself. And I listed three of them to all of you. <laughs> but now I'm like, no one can tell me that I'm not worthy of love. I fucking am here. So therefore I am worthy. And every day I'm going to make choices that I think are the best with the information that I know, with the knowledge that I have and the support system that I have and the resources I have available to me to make the best choice that I think in that moment is the right one for me. And here's the beautiful thing. When you feel like you made a wrong choice, you still have another one. Yep. You still have another choice. Yep. So oh. everyone take the fucking credit. Do not let the world tell you that it's boisterous and cocky to be proud of yourself. <laughs> be yes. fucking proud of yourself because life is hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're here. So good another freaking thing, job. Yeah. Another thing I know that um, both Ashley and I, so Ashley just told us that, you know, she was in an abusive relationship. She was she was raped. She's, um, you know, survived domestic abuse. Um, and here she is like shining bright, big and beautifully. Right. And I've been a victim of rape myself. I've been a victim of abusive relationships myself, um, in my, in my youth, as well as in my adult life. And even, you know, yeah, 
even that. So I understand how if you're currently in that situation, and I understand if you are currently in that situation that you're not happy in, it might not be necessarily like abusive, but it might be holding you back. Making these big sweeping changes might be like, oh yeah, it's easy for them to say they've done all this stuff and I don't know that I can do that. I'm going to tell you right now, once again, it is the small steps. There is generally speaking, no big giant leap that you take out of something like that. It is, I love myself on a daily basis. I appreciate the things that I'm doing. I'm going to disengage from this behavior so that this isn't getting like pushed into my subconscious. I'm going to disengage from whoever is telling me these things. And I'm going to know that that's their shit, not mine. It's the little things that get you to the place where you get to take the big action. So I don't want any single one of you to think that we're telling you, get out of the situation you're in. You yeah, can't. It doesn't you work can't. like that. You've got, you got this. It's a series of small steps and choices and fucking celebrate every single time you make that choice. And when you don't make that choice and you recognize, oh shit, I engaged in this behavior again, that's self-destructive or sabotaging, stop. Give yourself some grace and say, I'm a work in progress. I'm not there yet, but I'm getting there. So celebrate all of the small things, even if it's you just notice that you're doing something that's self-sabotaging. Just noticing that is the biggest win, you guys. It's it's phenomenal. And I really do want you guys take up all this space, live in the world big, be proud of yourself, and just celebrate all of those things. And we will celebrate them right along with you. Yes, right along the, with you. the small things. Like you think, you know, I always like thinking about grains of sand, right? It's a small thing, but then it creates a glorious beach right? There's the big lake and we're just one small pebble. But when we dive into it, we create ripples that go farther beyond that we can ever even imagine, right? Like I'm a huge person of sayings. I butcher them a lot, but I think that they're valid. (laughs) Um, But it's like Denise said, to take that massive step, you hear, take massive action, take messy, massive action. And I'm actually not a proponent of that. That's one of the things that I go against the coaching culture on. I say, just take a step, right? I remember um, someone I love very much that I grew up with was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he ended up being the second murder of a triple murder. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Gang violence. Now, no one in my family, we're not, that's not the life that we have, but he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And so many families' lives changed because of that instance. And at the time, what success meant like for me was to get out of my bed. That's it. The next day, it was like, get out of bed and brush my teeth. The next day, it was get out of bed and get out of the house and stand in the sun to so that I could feel alive, right? Because that was a really hard time. And could I just be happy? Fuck no. Why would I be happy? Someone I loved was murdered. And I have to pick up the pieces for that? I'm not happy. And I had to extend myself grace and say, that's okay. I got out of bed. And sometimes I had to roll the fuck out of bed. (laughs) <laughs> which is what I'm currently doing now for a very different reason. Um, but those small steps allowed me to get to the point where I could put makeup on and go out to coffee. And then I could advocate for myself to find a therapist. And then I could go to therapy. And then it is... One of the biggest things for me in my life is that I want to be like a lighthouse, right? I want to be someone where someone else can feel lost at sea and say, but I see that light and someone is trying to guide me to safe harbor. Pregnant and just emotional. That's just who I am. So pair them both together and it's wild sometimes. Um, (laughs) 
I don't need to tell you how you need, and neither does Denise. We don't need to tell you how you need to go down your journey to get to what you think success is, but we are sure as shit here to show you that success can be possible even when you have had a shit, you know, dealt to you. I want to be the person that when someone is like feeling like they're lost, feeling like they're not worthy, feeling like they'll never find someone who respects them because they have a history of trauma and abuse that I can show them. I don't know what your path looks like, but I know what's on the other side of it and it's fucking glorious. So here's my hand. Come with me. And that's why one of the reasons why when Denise asked me to lead a support group, I was so fucking honored because I didn't start making really good fucking money until I started loving myself. And so professionally, I have always led my businesses of saying business and life are intertwined. We should be living a humanistic life, seeing all parts of ourselves as beautiful and worthy because they, they're little pieces, but they make us whole. We are not broken. We are not missing anything. We came here into this world exactly how we are supposed to be so we can live that glorious, big, abundant life. And so when Denise asked, I was like, I feel so fucking seen because I do things a little bit differently. I bring a lot of heart and psychology and humanistic components and human behavior into our business. And this is why I can be very successful because you guys have heard me before. I don't think my work's that great. But when you can connect with your clients, which is a lot of what you're going to learn how to do through the emotive work that you're learning, they will fall in love with you and they won't want to be with anyone else. You're going to create this environment where people who have had traumas can feel comfortable and safe to be in lingerie, to be beautiful in just their skin. How hard is it for people to feel comfortable in their skin? Very hard for so many people. And you guys, as these incredible boudoir artists, get to create that space that maybe that one time is the first time that your client actually feels safe enough to feel comfortable in their own skin. Is there anything better than that? No, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's not when you have a heart to serve, not when you have a heart to serve. And this, this, I just want to, I want to address something that you keep saying that I think might be a little bit of a false narrative. So I'm going to pull Okay. You yes. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> um, and you guys can expect this from me in class. Your talent might not be where you want it to be yet, but talent isn't something you are just born with and it is fixed. It is something that grows and develops. And through class, every single one of you who does the work will cultivate that talent and become brilliant artists who understand emotive photography and how to go guide, coach, and direct your clients, not only for that completely immersive experience where they are free to express all of the beautiful things that are inside of themselves, because it's not our asses that make us beautiful. It's not the lingerie that makes us beautiful. It's not the way that we're posed that makes us beautiful. It's our humanity. It's the insides that as stripped down students, we learn how to do ourselves And then create a space for our clients to do. And when you give them that and you deliver that, you can't help but make magic. And your talent will soar like to the tops of this industry. Cross genre. It doesn't matter. So I want you to check that. I want you to stop saying I might not be the most talented. And I want you to put a yet in there with it. Well, that's why I'm so excited for this group because I know that there is more in me and I know that this program is going to bring it out of me. I know that I have like the heart, right? I'm a life coach. I have those aspects, but how tying it all together, you guys, when you can do 
and this is what I feel, and this may be wrong. This may be like unpopular opinion, but when you, when you pair what I do with like connecting to people's hearts, emotions, seeing things within them. And and Denise does this too, understanding body language so you can read them and know what's in their mind before they even open their mouths. And then you pair that with the direction and the connection and the emotion and the like the, the lighting and all of those things that make a beautiful image. And you put all of that together, like you're not like what can be better like your business will thrive by a byproduct of you showing up yeah and i know that to be true so i'm so excited to be on this journey and a part of me and maybe you guys feel this way too like i want to see what's at the end but i know that i cannot speed up the process and i need to click the modules (laughs) i need to listen i need to read i need to show up i need to tap into the facebook group i need to be present so that i'm not speeding through the journey to get to the destination because that just won't be the full fruition of how great it can be so As I tell myself that, I tell that to you too. Pair those two things together, nothing will stop you. And do the little things day by day because it is small habits that yield gigantic results. It is not gigantic leaps, as we alluded to before. Gigantic leaps are a lot of times by faith or fear, and there's not a fully rooted foundation that's really strong. Which so is- therefore we can slip. Yeah. When we take the small action repeatedly, it becomes more habit forming and it's like steadfast and firm. So personally, I'm a fan of those little steps over the gigantic leaps. Yeah. I'm there's just so many comments in the in this thread that are just like, oh, pulling at my heart, just pulling at my heart and pulling at my heart. And I just want all of you to know you're seen, you're heard, you're loved, you're completely accepted here. You are in a safe space, no judgment. And whether you're part of our class or you're not, if you're just part of the community, we're here to support you. We're here to love you. And we're here to be on this journey with you. Um, Ashley, who do you think you, the perfect person is to be working with you or who are the ideal people that need to be, should be working with you through this course? If they've already like identified some initial struggles, um, I know that I'm the perfect person to be working with you because <laughs> I am hell bent on showing up for myself and loving myself and taking those small actions and having someone help me be accountable and remind me when I kind of slip. Um, and your, your humanistic approach just like, is like, (sighs) like, it's just the sexiest thing in the whole world. (laughs) It's, it's like all up my alley with, you know, all of the psychology and science that's behind it and all of the beautiful things. Who is the right person to be working with you? Who are the students who should make that additional investment in themselves to be working with you so that they get the support that they need in addition to what we're providing in Strip Down? Beautiful question. And thank you so much for providing me the opportunity to answer that. Um, I think any student who is ready to radically be honest with themselves and to radically love themselves. If you're someone who has had a a drive to achieve or create your life, um, but you're just feeling like you don't know where to get started, that's a good place to be in the support group. You've taken the step to join Strip Down And that is a tried and true program. You know that there's absolute success, but for some reason you're feeling like that sex, that that sex, (laughs) that success um, is not for you, that there's going to be something that 
hold you back from having what everyone else has, you need to be in the group because you're already setting this precedent that I know this is going to be amazing. I really, really want this, but I don't think that I'm going to have what other people have had. Why? Why? Let's talk about it. Let's get deeper. There's something deeper than I don't have time. Because if there is something that is a priority, you will make time. And if it's not, you'll make excuses. So if you're ready to stop making excuses and figure out the route to why you keep not being able to graduate. So if all of you alumni out there, if you have gone through and you haven't fully completed the course, oh, this is going to be sassy, but we're a sassy group, so it's okay. Um, if you are, if you, if this is your second, third, fourth time signing up for Strip Down and you have yet to complete it, what's going to make this time different? If you're on your own, you're doing it exactly the same. You're in a different place. Absolutely. But are you doing everything you can to get you to that finish line? So I would love every alumni who is returning, who did not complete the program the first time to be in the group. Absolutely, freaking lonely. Me too. Every it, single one of you. Every single one of you. Every single one of you. I need if, to get you guys across the finish line. Let's go. Yes. So that absolutely, bar none, hands down. Um, but if you're brand new to Strip Down and this is your first time and you are excited, but you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed and you have a history of buying courses and not finishing them, you need to be in this course because to me, you're an alumni student. You're a lifelong learner, but you're not getting across the finish line. And there's, there may be something deeper. Again, it's not time. If you ask Denise, if she does shows you her audit and if I show you my audit, y'all, <laughs> we don't have time. But this shit's so fucking important that we're showing up for hours multiple times before group starts to, to share with you guys, to provide free value to you guys so that you can make, to make choices that are going to help you get to that version of success for you. So if you are a serial course purchaser, but not a serial graduator, you need to be in the group. <laughs> yeah, I concur. Um, I saw one, one question in specific that said, what if we start and then re realize that we need, we need it? Can we join later? So I definitely think that Denise and I were talking about what she's going to be dropping today. Um, I, what do you think, Denise? Like, how long do you think we should allow them to? Because I do think that you may not know what you need until you see what's ahead. And I don't even know exactly what's ahead, you guys. When I say I am in this with you, I didn't get any previews. <laughs> I am a student who is getting access in real time with all of you. Um, but I did have a conversation with Denise and I do know that we're asking a lot of you because we know that there's so much in you and you guys all deserve to get to the level that you will achieve when you go through this program. Um, I would say by the time module two or three drops, what do you think? You know what's ahead. <laughs> Module in module two. one, I believe that you guys are going to see um, that, yeah, I think you're going to be able to ascertain whether or not you need this. I don't want to let people in too late because relationships are going to start forming. You're going to have covered a lot of things with them. So I don't want it to go too far. So I think after, I think the deadline should probably be Friday of next week. Okay. And I fully support whatever you think. I agree. When we start, like, here's the deal. We're only letting a handful of people in. And if for some reason it does go over 15 and we have some more people, I might split it up into two groups because I think it is really important for us to be able to have the um, space. Like, honestly, I show up, I do lives. I am the face of my company. Absolutely. But I am not someone who in a big group of people, um, unless I'm like the coach, <laughs> if I am an attendee, if I was just watching, I wouldn't be chiming in as much. I wouldn't be the person to be like, Hey, Denise, let me on live. Right. I, 
I get so nervous. I'm such an introvert at heart that I think when we're going through, you know, a process, like this is going to be a process to change your life, that changes your perspective, that's going to allow you to see life and your work through a different lens. When it's too large, some of those people who have the tendency to be quiet may be quiet. And I don't want them to be. I want to create a very small and nurturing environment. So if it gets to the point where there's more people that need it, then I will add another group into my schedule. I'll find the time because it's a freaking priority. Yeah. I just saw a couple of comments that I want to address. Someone is mentioning um, there's, you know, there's been a cash outlay thus far. Um, and some of us don't have the money to do this, no matter how amazing it sounds. And that can be very much a reality for some people. And for those of you who can't do that, we completely understand. I do want to mention, however, um, for my students who have taken this class, please drop in the comments the value of this class. Um, I have charged, uh, in most cases, under $3,000 for this course. This is a 12-week intensive mentoring course. My price for what you are getting is unheard of. Your ROI on this course is going to exceed this by, um, I'm very comfortable by saying 20 times, um, if not like triple that number. The next iteration of this course will be nowhere near this price. Um, I value myself and my work and my prices are going up because I put so much work into this course. So, and this is not to come off as like, you know, snarky. It's just, it's just fact guys. You charge the prices that you charge um, because you value yourselves and the work that you do for your clients. It's time that I start doing the same. And that's been part of my growth recently as well. So um, uh, y'all are in this at a ridiculous price, a price that I probably should not have charged. <laughs> um, so there are those of us out there who cannot afford the additional $500 to be in Ashley's course. And, and that's okay. You will lean on your peers. You will lead on your accountability partners. You will lead on me. If you can't afford it and you want more in depth, do it. And if you can't, you don't have to. I mean, we're not telling you that you have to. And we were really on here today trying to talk to our students and not just our students, but people who are in the industry and give them, you know, ideas on how to move past overwhelm and go and redefine success and start working on your mindset. So I don't want you guys to think that this is a sales pitch, which is kind of some of the things that I'm seeing in here, because it's not. When I'm selling you on something, when I'm trying to sell you, I will tell you, I want you to buy this because I think that you need it. Um, I'm offering up something to you. If you want it, you can have it. If you don't want it, you don't need to have it. But the purpose of this live truly was to bring you guys as much value as possible. Um, as students, we want to give you this value. But even members of this community who have not been able to sign up for Strip Down, we want to continue bringing you value as well because, because you're here and you're showing up for yourself. And if I see you doing that, my big old bleeding heart is going to want to support you through your journey. I'm like Ashley. Ashley wants to be the lighthouse. I want to be the sunshine. I, I want to be the sunshine that, that makes everything brighter for everyone and a little bit more beautiful and helps people get to the places they want to get to by sharing the free value that I can share, but also by making a living for myself. I need to do both. I have to balance both. But I'm committed to that. I am committed to bringing you as much value as possible. Ashley and I will be coming back. This isn't going to end when class starts. We'll be here. I will be coming back during class starts. I will never fall off from this group again. I will be here. I am committed to you guys. I am committed to your journey. I will bring you all of the free value that I absolutely can. So if you can do it, fucking do it. And if you can't do it, that's okay too. And we're going to keep bringing you value. This isn't contingent upon whether or not you give us your money. And you know what? That's really fucking rare 
in this world. And another one of the reasons I chose Ashley is because of that humanistic approach and because she cares the way that I care. And the people that are on my team now, they're on my team. A big, huge shout out to Colleen because they care the way that I care. Big, huge shout out to Shay because she cares the way that I care. Big, huge shout out to the accountability uh, ambassadors because they fucking care the way that I care. You guys are going to be loved and taken care of because I have curated a group of people who truly care about making a difference in the lives of other people. We have hearts to serve and we are going to serve. Absolutely. So. It's such a beautiful thing. Like, yeah, sometimes finances are the thing. And if it's not the right time, it's not the right time. And that is absolutely okay. You may not have the money to invest in the support group led by me, but you do have an accountability partner who has actually, who's gone through the course, right? So this, your version of success can be what you need it to be. And it may not be to tap into the support group led by me. It may be to tap into your accountability partner. And that is okay. <laughs> the beautiful thing is, is that this group is growing with really amazing entrepreneurs and photographers that want to grow. And we are able to, because of our businesses, we're able to come in and provide free value, right? Yep. So when you love what you do and you set certain priorities, you, you make the time happen. So I love that Denise is like, even though group's going to start, the course is going to start, she's still going to be showing up here. And I'll be here every time Denise asks me to be. <laughs> because I think I'm going to toot our horns. I think we're a pretty fucking big powerhouse duo here. And I think being in people's energies, um, I always feel so uplifted after these calls. I feel like I get so much value. I'm reading these comments. And yeah, I think our conversation kind of took a little turn that we didn't foresee, but it was necessary because the comments that were coming through about, you know, their mindsets and situations and overcoming and making a choice and like that is so valuable. Like how many times do you actually get to be in a group of so many like-minded individuals that are really taking care of their businesses and wanting to take care of themselves because they know that it is intertwined. And when you do one well, do the other well, nothing can be in your way. So we are going to provide free value to you. So if the moment isn't even an option for you to join in to strip down, I'm sure that you've already gotten so much value that you can implement into your life and into your business without even spending a damn dime. So that's a huge hats off to you, Denise and your team, because I mean, I'm a business coach and a life coach. I'm around a lot of people who do similar things. And this one is the most heart-centered value action takeaway lives that I've been on and it's continually like that. So I'm just proud of you. I mm -hmm. love being here. Thanks for seeing shit in me that you want your students to be around. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I adore you. And I think you're such an asset to, to this program. Um, I want all of you to know too. Yes. Okay. The conversation did take a turn and that is not going to be uncommon when I'm on or when I'm on with Ashley, because we pay attention because we see you, we listen to you, we hear you, and we're going to address the things that you're talking about. And so we might set out with one intention, but if we keep seeing the same thing over and over again, we're going to get on it because we want to help you guys. With that, Ashley, I want to give them one more piece of advice. Um, and then I want to announce the winner of the person who is going to be lucky enough to work with you. Like I'm able to work with you. Um, so in any situation, not just in strip down, but in any situation, say you've been running your business and you've had some setbacks or you're not doing so good in social media right now. You're sick of batching stuff. You're tired of running your Facebook group. 
whatever it is that you've kind of fallen off on and you're maybe beating yourself up a little bit, what's the best way to get back on the wagon, um, whether it be in those situations or in class? What is the, what's your advice for getting back on the wagon um, as nicely to yourself as possible um, and as effectively as possible? A few things that come directly to mind. One is to reconnect to the why as to why you got started in the first place. That should that should inspire you. One. Two, take a small step so you can have that quick win so that you feel that you are moving forward and you have a little bit more uh, inspiration in yourself. Three, Ask yourself if what you've been doing has been working or if it's not working, right? So like talking about the example of like, you know, batch editing or batch creating content or social media or just different aspects of your business that are just kind of like, you know, your oil and water with it. Ask yourself, do you have to do that? I have a client who was just not wanting to show up on show... My tongue got in the way, not wanting to show up on social media at all. She's like, how do I build my business? I'm like, if you're not going to show up, the energy you have bringing into that aspect of the thing that you're not wanting to do is going to translate into potential clients and they're going to be put off by it. So if it's not working for you, then don't do it. Go back to the drawing board and get creative. We built her schedule out in two months. She cannot take any more clients. She never made a post on social media. You can look at how your energy flows and how your focus stays on task. And you don't have to do things the way that everybody else is doing them. You get to build your business just like you get to build your life. Sometimes you don't know exactly where to start. And that's why I would, you know, slide into my DMs (laughs) because that's what I do for a living. I help people see different ways of doing things when they're having a resistance towards it. And we really need to dive into, is it actual resistance because it's hard and it's unknown and you just don't have the skill yet, like Denise in the podcast? Um, Or are you having resistance because it's truly not in alignment with your uh, authentic human design? Because if it's not in alignment with your authentic human design, you're just going to keep hitting your head. So stop freaking doing it. Right. So just to reiterate, give yourself a quick win, do something, take a little bit of action because those small actions yield massive results. Take a deep breath. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, Reconnect to the why. And again, if your why is not inspiring you, you're not there yet. Anytime Denise and I talk about our why, we basically cry. Right. So if yours isn't going to re-inspire you when you revisit it, you didn't go deep enough. So ask yourself, why does that matter? Why is that relevant? Why, 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 why? Till you can get to a place where anytime you you read it, you see it, you remind yourself, you're just like, fuck yeah, let's go. Because if you're not there yet, then your why is not there yet. Because it should really inspire you to get going again. Yeah. Beautiful. Wonderful. Okay, Colleen, um, I need you to tell me who our winner is. So I'm, I'm in my, I'm in my, oh, um, hang on one second. Oh, so there's a couple of things I need to remind you because I've got texts from my team and I wasn't looking at my text messages. Sorry, y'all. Okay. So Susan Fellows wants to know, when does the TAC class actually take place, Ashley? What days are you going to be holding class? That is a really good question. And I've been waiting to announce that day because I want to see who is all in it. We will have our own private Facebook group. So I will be polling the people in it to see what time of week works best for the majority. I am going to be recording the calls and sending them out. So if you can't make them all the time, we will have the replay so you won't miss out on anything. Again, it'll be um, audio. So go ahead and put it on when you're cooking dinner, when you're driving or when you're in the shower, you'll get all the information (laughs) that you need. Um, 
Um, so I haven't made a decision yet, but I'm thinking it's probably going to be Tuesday because the courses drop on Friday, right, Denise, the modules? Yes. So you're going to have the weekend start Monday to get through some of the curriculum and we will be able to chat before the Q&As because the Q&As are going to be on Thursdays at 11. Right, Denise? Yes. Yes. No, See, look at me. No, no. 12. Thursdays no. at 12. 12. Okay. Um, so I want to be able to give us enough time to kind of go through the information as much as we can, see what's coming up for us, tackle them, and then have some time before the Q&A to implement to get th through the finish line. So I'm pretty much believing it's going to be Tuesdays, the exact time. Let's see where everyone's going to be visiting us from. Yeah. Let's what time zones we have. Yep. Okay. So I have something from Michelle Dobbs that I want to read really quick. So Michelle said, I can honestly say that this class is nothing like anything out there. I've spent thousands with workshops, training classes, groups, et cetera. They're either a hundred percent video um, or video with a pre-weekly live check-in that is one-sided instructor talking and no, oh my goodness. Come on, Denise Reed. Um, and no accountability. Um, etc. I've been to workshops that do an in mass shooting setup, which is the worst because you don't get to really create. It's just about taking a photo that works as far as being a decent photo. Strip down is more than the class I took in January 2022. And the additional eight week business was not part of the original strip down. The guest instructors are incredible. And none of the classes had ambassadors that are there to help student classes. Basically, she's telling you guys to take it. She's also currently working with Ashley and having a, a massive amount of success. I know that she put in the comments that anytime that she can grow, she absolutely works to grow. Um, and that that is happening as she's working with Ashley, both personally and professionally. She's very happy with it. I'm sure if any of you have questions, um, Michelle John Dobbs would be happy to answer them so you can reach out to her. Um, and then I need to remind you guys that today, um, today, uh, this class will be $500. And then after today, it goes up to $599. So you have today to make this decision. And then after that, it goes up to $599. Is that correct, Ashley? I was just going to do it for 500 y'all. Let's, I wasn't good. I don't know where the 599 came. I might have said that, but I feel really good today. And I just had like a really incredible day. So I'm okay keeping it at 500, but it is capped, right? So remember that you're going to want to get in um, so that I have the capacity because um, there's going to be one week where I'm getting married, August 5th. <laughs> <laughs> so we um, might have to reschedule. Um, and then I'm also super pregnant. I'm not super pregnant right now. But as we go through, I'll see some of you guys at the workshop. I don't want to overload myself, right? That's something that, you know, Denise and I have been talking about the whole entire time um, of like looking at what I have ahead of me, which is a brand new journey, first time mom. Um, and I don't want to take on too many students that I won't be able to fully support. So when it'll get to the time where I say I'm going to be tapped out, we're closing it down, guys. Okay. Because I want to be able to fully bring everything I have to you. Yeah. And and just as a little side note that I'm really freaking excited about is that I'm going to be shooting Ashley's maternity session and I'm going to be turning it into part of the cross genre class on emotions in portraiture. Who is excited? <laughs> Me. I couldn't be any more excited. I'm so excited about that. Okay, so with that, let's get somebody else excited, okay? So our winner is Strip Down alumni, actually, Sierra Weaver. Congratulations. Welcome, Sierra. Oh, she was, she's so on it. Did you see how quick that comment came yeah, in? I, I loved like, it. Oh <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm super stoked. I'm super stoked for you, Sierra. That's awesome. I'm also really glad that it's, a, it's an alumni. That's amazing. So, oh, wait, no. She was excited about your maternity thing. Oh, <laughs> to see it one Double excited. Yeah, double excitement for you, Sierra. Congratulations, my love. 
Um, you deserve this. And I know that you're going to have an incredible time working with Ashley. Ashley, you're going to love Sierra. I absolutely love her too. I'm super stoked that she was randomly chosen. That's awesome. Yes. Um, okay. So we're going to do our best to come in here and try and answer your guys's questions. Um, Colleen, if you can drop a link for me for, um, uh, for Ashley's class, I would appreciate that. And for those of you who are on this class, you haven't signed up for strip down yet. Um, the class is, um, preemptively dropping tonight. Um, module one, we already had prep week out, but module one is dropping tonight. Course got doors closed Monday night. So, um, yeah, I would highly suggest that if you've been on the fence and you're not sure that, and you're thinking you want to do it, you, you, you better hop on it. You better, you better hop yeah. on both of them. So, um, and if not, if you can't do it, that's okay too. That was one of my like very transparent, I'm selling to you moments. Join the fucking class. <laughs> yeah. Period. End of story. Every single photographer needs this in their toolbox. Look, I have been told this several times. I have this product that, that a single person in the industry teaches. If you try and Google body language, what you get is like how to attract a woman or like how to have power poses or, you know, there is nothing like this that will change your work and your life the way that this class will. There are tons of regurgitated like photography education things out there, but this, this is special, this is different, and it is very heart-centered. And so if you want true transformation and growth, I'll see your asses on the other side of Strip Down. Ashley, you and that little bump have a beautiful day today. Thank we you. Greatly appreciate you coming on and helping us. Um, I'll be looking forward to doing a lot more of these with you. And to everyone who came, thank you so much for your time. We know it's valuable. I hope that we were able to give you some really good things. How to get started in planning for success. Redefine your success. Just to recap, right? Start taking actions. What to do when you feel overwhelmed and no have to time, no time to do what you have to do. Just start taking small action. Let's let the momentum carry you. It's physics. The body in movement stays in movement. So just keep doing it. Give yourself grace. And then how do you get back on the wagon when you feel you might have fallen off? Reconnect to your why. Did I miss anything there? Um, so when it comes to how to the second one, oh my gosh, hello. Get mm. uh, I wrote notes and now I'm like scribbling like everyone's names. And I just want to say, welcome, Jennifer. <laughs> saw you say that you're in the group. So I'm like writing people's names down. Um, but yes, use the time management strategies, time block, set time apart, Parkinson's method or Parkinson's effect or theory. I cannot remember, but it is Parkinson's. However long something you give something to take, it will take that long. So prioritize, time block, delegate, and use the do not disturb feature on your phone. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey. That's my own favorite one. Never used it before. Think I need it. <laughs> oh, girl. Mm -hmm. You'll get the text messages and the notifications, but not when it's on do not disturb. When you click it over, then you'll see. But, oof, it is what I use for nap time because I am pregnant and tired in the middle of the day. So. <laughs> We want to thank all of you. Thank you for all of your kind words. Thank you for all of your love. Thank you for showing up for yourselves. I'm so proud of you. Um, each and every one of you is a big, bright, beautiful, shining star who can go make the most amazing of differences in this world and in your life. It's just being aware, taking personal responsibility, and just one foot in front of the other. Um, I know that Ashley believes in you. I believe in you. My team believes in you. We're here for you. You guys got this. And in turn, we totally appreciate your kind words and your love and your support. So 
Thank you so much for all of that. Ashley, thank you for being a part of this amazing journey. Thank you for being a part of my journey. And I'm excited to be a part of yours. It's just like winning all the way around. I know, so such good. a great 48 yeah. hours. John yeah. got fitted for his wedding outfit. We got our stroller. I landed a one-on-one -on -one client. Then we're here and I'm going to be a part of a new course. Awesome yeah, lady. Oh my God. Yes. No, it's so good. And I get to shoot that maternity session. Yeah. You guys know I'm chomping at the bit for that. Chomping at the bit for it. Can you guys even imagine what Denise is going to curate for me? Oh, the epic. I am going to feel like a fucking badass. <laughs> I'm already thinking Cleopatra. I do have some of those vibes. My queen. Yes. Amazing. Oh my God. And Aphrodite. We're just going to use all the mythology. I think we'll just do like a mythological the whole sequence. Uh, yeah. Uh, ready to Stay go. Stay tuned for that guys. Yeah. That's going to be fucking fire. And yeah. anyone who's going to be at the in-person <laughs> workshop, I will see you there. Yep. Okay. Very kids. excited for that. Yeah. We love you all. Thank you all so much. Have an amazing day. We will see you soon. Good luck with class tonight. Bye.